and welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I am your host. And we are now into the third class and it is the Heart of Stone. And this, these 12 classes will be about the difference between a soft heart, a flesh heart, which, you know, in scripture, God says he's going to take their heart of stone and make it one of flesh. And we know that he meant that he's going to take something hardened and unyielding and make it into something soft and feeling. And I want to start off a little bit just to just to give you an idea of how important this particular topic is we know that the Pharisees and Sadducees of Jesus day had hardened hearts Jesus told them that they followed the law perfectly or so they thought and they had hearts that were far from God he even went as far as to call them children of Satan so what is it about the religious heart that makes it one of stone and that's what we need to look at today because we don't always realize in fact we're we're as blind as the pharisees and sadducees where we have a heart of stone and i go back to in revelations 3:18 Jesus has I salve. He knows he knows that every place in our heart that is religious basically is what cools the hot passionate waters of our love for him. Now let me rephrase that because it's hard to understand that. The church of Laodicea had grown lukewarm. Remember they were the church in between the cold spring city and the hot spring city and they were lukewarm. So what I'm saying is, is that we are trying to stir up our love, our, our passionate love of Jesus Christ, you know, and back to Revelations 2, 4, stirring up our first love. And everywhere we have a heart of stone, stone is cold. Everywhere we have a heart of stone, we are basically taking cold water and pouring it into all this beautiful work that we're doing in trying to develop our heart of love, our, our renewed passion for Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you to ask first, ask Jesus, where, where have I got places that I'm religious? There are many things that make our hearts stone, you know, bitterness, um, unforgiveness, which I guess is bitterness, but you know, that is a big one. And, um, I, you know, I'm not thinking anything else is coming to me right at the minute, but this religious spirit is so offensive and you know it's funny because everywhere I'm religious in my heart and someone comes and confronts it I get furious I don't it's like that spirit automatically has this sense of offense how dare you tell me that I'm this way and um we see that right away when Jesus stood up in his hometown Nazareth he went to the temple he stood up he took Isaiah I want to say 61 and he read that famous passage you know I've come to preach good uh, good news to the poor and um, you know hope for the hopeless and I can't remember them all but you know it's that whole passage where Isaiah had written that that's what the Messiah would do that's what the and so this is what Jesus did and he closes up and he says now this has been fulfilled in your hearing and he gives it back to him and the whole place was so excited yay we all knew Jesus was gonna be one day a rabbi or you know something a teacher 
And um, then he basically looks at him and says, you know, one day you're going to say, healer, heal yourself. And I forget the other one, two very confrontational things. And they stopped and they're like, what are you talking about? And I mean, he offends them huge. And it's like they all snapped. They rushed at him. They pushed him out of the temple. They pushed him up the hill and they were going to throw him off the cliff. And he just walks right through them. But I want you to understand, he already saw in them such a spirit of religion that when he confronted it, they got furious. It was their natural response because that spirit of religion automatically just becomes intensely furious. And it's so funny because it goes after Jesus Christ. It was the spirit that basically incited the, not just the Jewish leaders, but then they turned around and used it to incite the people to, to shout, crucify him, crucify him. So we know this spirit has a lot of anger and, and it's really what I believe will fuel the Antichrist in the earth. And it pretty much fuels that same Antichrist spirit in us. So what is the spirit of religion? And, and how does it uh, connect with this heart of stone? So anything that's religious, and I use that word in a negative way, anything that's religious, that is um, rituals, actions, things we do that are empty of true heartfelt love so what what we're after is the soft heart remember the heart of flesh the one that feels the one that connects with Jesus but when we have hardened places which we've talked about the circumcision of the heart when we have those hardened places they become like stone over time and when we have these religious acts they are a substitute for intimacy. They are our way of doing something that ticks the boxes of what we think is required to fulfill God's desire, what he wants us to do. Now we know in John 6, they asked him, what is it that the Father, the, you know, Father God requires? What is it that he wants us to do? What is the good work? And Jesus responds, to believe in the one he has sent. And so our good work is not action, it's faith. And we see that in Hebrews when um, it talks about how that everything by faith, Abraham by faith, is the one that pleases God. It says in uh, Hebrews 11, without faith, we cannot please God. So ultimately, we are needing to look at the places in our heart that are still actions without faith, without love, without the, the fleshy feeling of our desire to please God in the way that is his heart. And so we have doctrines, theologies, we have actions, we, maybe we read our Bible every day. Maybe we've read through the Bible like 10 times and it's one of our things. And we tick that box off, we've done our part. Or maybe we go uh, share the gospel with, you know, maybe we have a, a thing that we decide we're going to, at least one person every month, we're going to tell about Jesus Christ. We tick that box off. Or maybe we give so much money. We say, okay, I'm giving you, I'm going to give you over what? The tithe. Because I feel like I'm supposed to. Now, it's not God told you, but you felt like you were supposed to. And so you tick that little box off every time that you give that amount. You feel like you've done your due and it's pleasing to God. 
because it's something you chose to do and you do it and it's a good work. Now we know scripture says that our good works is as filthy rags to Jesus. So again, we're back to the point. Almost everything we do has to be measured by what's happening in our heart. And so these places of stone where we have doctrines and we have theologies and we have actions and we have, uh, I will say rituals, we do that in our own lives. Every morning we're going to have a quiet time, come, you know, whatever. And we do it, but we, we don't really do it unto Jesus. We don't really do it with a softened heart. We do it to tick off the box. That is what I'm talking about when I say that we have actions that are empty. And these things all together, and you know, I'll get more into the doctrines and theologies tomorrow. But these things, these things that we hold on to as our actions, as our, as our um, responsibility, you know, this, uh, you know, I noticed that a spirit of religion is incredibly responsible and practical and I watch people walk that out because they're responsible and they're practical people and they're gonna do what's right but yet their heart is as far from God as it can be because there's no love in that there's no true desire to please God it's really an inner code that they have to please themselves and what feels that pride and that's really the Pharisees and Sadducees of Jesus' day were full of pride and fear. They were afraid that if they let Jesus continue, he would bring down the Roman government on their heads and it would possibly cause them to lose their temples and their uh, religious traditions. And they were afraid they were you know get reprimanded and possibly things get destroyed well 70 years after they had Jesus killed that happened anyway I mean Israel was annihilated all the temples were destroyed you know um, the main temple I should say was the biggest one and um, you know the people were just basically scattered across the earth so I'm just saying that we have to take a serious look at this and this is what we're going to do for these two these 12 classes is to really assess everywhere we're holding on to something we do or believe that doesn't actually bring us closer to Jesus it's really more like walls or calluses on our heart that hinder our time with Jesus and right now isn't that what we're working towards is to get our hearts ready for him so tomorrow we'll look more in detail but today I want to finish in prayer and I want to ask that you would just agree with me that we want to see these places so Jesus we come to you right now and we acknowledge that there are always places in us that are raised up against the knowledge of you there are always places in us that basically the enemy is trying to incite us to be offended by the real genuine love that of who you are and what you're doing in us and I ask now that you would that battle between the flesh and the spirit between what's genuine love and what's just our own prideful righteous acts that you would begin to expose these things we want our hearts to be ready for you we want our hearts to be truly soft and loving and responsive and we know that only you can do this work so give us the salve on our eyes so that we can see the things that are basically making us lukewarm give us what we need Jesus to open our door our hearts door and make it possible for us to experience you in Jesus name I pray amen okay guys I will talk to you tomorrow <laughs> bye thank you for listening to my podcast 
I have more podcast series, and you can find them on my website, heavensdoor41.com. Okay, have a blessed day. Bye.